wore this in the hopes that a few other people would wear onesies, but I hope you're all comfortable tonight. Um, I'm nervous as hell, and this is going to be fun. We made bingo. Um, so, <laughs> thank you so much to Bosby and the, the rest of the staff and student senate for putting this on, and, and for you all for being here, for nominating me, and uh, for Lindsay for teaching me how to knit. Um, I'm actually... I'm super lucky to be able to share the stage with such an incredible person and a really great friend. So it's, it's kind of a special night. Um, I gotta turn this mic on so that you can hear what I'm saying. Hello? Hello? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time. There we go. All right, so yes, thanks for coming. Uh, tonight, you all have bingo cards, um, or Colin cards, is I would maybe want to call them tonight. Um, it's not narcissistic, um, but it is fun and different, and I'm not sure how it's going to go. It's a social experiment, um, and it's actually kind of a fail-safe, too. If I put you to sleep tonight, um, you can all take them and walk away, and you got something out of this. So uh, the way we're going to do this is if I'm saying something during my lecture or something comes up on the screen and it happens to be on your sheet, you can just mark it off, um, and if you get a Colin, or a bingo. Um, you could just stand up and go, Colin! And so we'll do that for the first three people that get it. I don't know how it's going to go. You're going to interrupt me. I'm going to lose my place. We're going to roll with it. It's going to be fun. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, anyway, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey here at CMU, shed uh, some of the things that I've learned here, and then uh, tied up in this conversation is a little bit about success and what does it mean to be successful at CMU. Um, so I'm a big picture person, and I like to think about the process and how you get from point A to point B. So um, we're going to start with the order of events. If we're looking for success, we have to first start with... What? It is on. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to start with, okay, so what do I learn at CMU? But if we are ending with success, we're going to start with what makes a CMU student. And so like the Powerpuff Girls, every, <laughs> every CMU student is made up of sugar, which is innova innovation, spice, which is hard work, everything nice, relative humility, and then, of course, chemical X, which I think is passion. And I think CMU is a special place because of the dedication and the curiosity of the people on this campus. And that, that makes us do incredible things. And I think the passion is the root of that. And one of my favorite things about CMU is walking around on a night like tonight. Hi, Gina. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to make it. Um, walking around on a night like tonight and knowing that there are people in the library, people in research labs, doing incredible things, you know, working incredible hours, pushing really great, great problems, um, and striving towards better. You know, we're always, we're always looking to do something better, something more, something new. Um, so a place, I think, is made by the people who are in it. Um, and I want to thank you all for your passion and contributions for making this place what it is. Um, so that's a CMU student. But how do we measure success here at CMU? Everyone has their own definition. For some people, it's um, balancing you know, career focus with that uh, professional diversification, or maybe it's just how happy something makes you determines how successful you think it is. Um, all too often, I think we value success or judge success based on what's at the top of our paper or what we want to be at the top of our paper. And I think maybe we should think back to the book that we all read uh, the last lecture and think about the first painting award. Because by awarding originality and critical thinking, we're, we're, uh, we're achieving something great. Even if we fail, we're on the right path. And we know that maybe with a little more work, with a little bit more effort, a little bit more time, we can have something that's cutting edge, maybe um, groundbreaking, maybe the next startup, maybe it's the next thing since sliced bread. So as far as failure, we'll come back to that later. But my idea of success is really tied up with my value on reflection. And if you take something away from tonight, whether it's your Colin Bingo or a little piece of what I said, whether you liked it or whether you didn't like it, and I think this goes to your whole life, if you can take one thing away from every experience you had, I think that I'll have been successful and that you might be successful as well. 
Um, I don't think learning always comes on a plate ready to consume, but it's always available and you just have to find it and grab it. But why learn in the first place, right? I believe that it has to do with growth. And so this is my incomplete definition of growth. Everybody has a different definition. I asked Helen what hers was. I picked it <coughs> instead. <laughs> hers is okay. <laughs> so I think growth may be defined as an expansion of one's essence, character, or worldview. And this can be either emotionally or spiritually or mentally. You can go on and on. Um, and I think growth is really important um, in everything we do. We don't want to be stagnant. We came here, we're not the same person, or I'm not the same person that I was four years ago. And I don't expect that next year or tomorrow even, you'll be the same person you are today. So now we're going to talk about my college experience. <laughs> But we're not yet. First, I want to talk about the question, who am I? It's basically every college essay question starts off with something like, who are you? It's kind of how we all ended up in this room at some, some way or another. Um, and my response would be, I think, therefore I am, which is a quote by Rene Descartes. Um, and that may not go naturally with who am I in your head, but for me it does. I was part of a philosophy of the musical back in high school. It was a parody of The Wizard of Oz, and we sang this one song from Lemitz, which is, Who am I? I think, therefore I am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I saw the pens moving. That's good. We're paying attention. <laughs> so this, this is a question that is always buzzing around my head. And in general, I, I think a lot and I do a lot of reflecting. And I think that's the key, one of the keys to, for my success. Because um, you can get stuck in the routine, you can get lost in the monotony of something, um, you can get drowned in your work here, or you can get you know, really depressed by Pittsburgh's gray skies. Or you can lose yourself to some uh, carnival induced stress relief or peer pressured uh, expectations. But, and I'm not saying I don't do those things and I don't get lost, but by asking questions like who am I repeatedly to myself, it helps bring me back onto the right path. And it helps me rediscover what I want in life, what drives me, what inspires me to go out and pursue my dreams, regardless of what stands in my way or what society says I should be doing. So before I stray too much, let's get back to the fun stuff, my college experience. <laughs> so this is probably more accurate to what my college experience looks like. Hey, Helen. <laughs> Um, so my college experience has looked more like this. It hasn't been maybe as dramatic. It hasn't been maybe looking like this on the surface. But you know, sometimes you have your highs, sometimes you have your lows. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see where you're going or where you came from or where you are. And sometimes it's as clear as day and you, can, you didn't ever think of the path being obscured. Um, and some of these mountains are external. Uh, some of these valleys are external, like maybe uh, falling ill or losing your ID card twice in one day, which, as some of you know from eTower, this happened to me this weekend. Um, and some of them are internal, and feelings of like doubt or guilt or love or joy. Um, so I'm going to share with you tonight a few of my peaks and a few of my valleys. And of course, we have to start with freshman year, the first series of ups and downs. So I was at home within the first few days of being here on this campus. My roommate was fantastic and from half a world away. Um, my friends, I met a really great friend during my first uh, floor day at Flagstaff Hill. My music taste shifted uh, from the time I got here on campus to the end of my first semester. I went from listening to alternative rock and grunge to, you know, putting in some rap, hip hop, a little bit of EDM, <laughs> some bangra, you know. <laughs> so uh, definitely grew a lot musically. Um, and before I knew it, I was in my first serious relationship. I was involved in three or four different student organizations, and I was devising a way to take the fence. But not everything was sunshine and daisies. I got slammed by classes. I got a 50 and a 52 on my first MEC exams. I dropped most of my extracurriculars to keep up. I was staying up till three in the morning, uh, and it wasn't cutting it. On the weekends, I was staying up till four or five in the morning, and then sleeping till one or two in the afternoon. And it was stopping me from getting back on top of things. Um, and worse, I lost my appetite and I was eating like one meal a day. So I wasn't doing really well. This is my first, uh, first interaction with wellness at CMU. It was my first interaction with failure. Um, and I, sh I wasn't sure if I was meant to be here. I had floor mates down the hall that were making logarithmic spirals, um, 3D printing them for fun. Uh, I knew people that were like killing it in all their classes uh, or like dancing in three different DS productions a semester. Uh, and I'd fallen into this trap where I was comparing myself to other people to drive my own self-worth. 
And I didn't feel smart and I didn't feel cool. So I decided I needed to make a change. First with my academics and then with my uh, framing of self-worth. So I started to work smarter and not harder. I asked for help. I met with professors, TAs, and academic development. I got organized. The only reason I showed up today was because I put a note in my phone calendar. Otherwise, I would have forgotten completely. <laughs> Despite all the emails that I received. <laughs> I started sleeping at reasonable times. I started working early, even though I still probably finished right up until the deadline. And because of that, I wasn't as stressed as I, I had been prior. And I learned how to survive here. But to thrive here, I needed to change my concept of worth. I kept learning from everything I did, and I still looked towards the people around me uh, to learn new things and to see what they were doing. But I also contented myself with what I knew I was good at and what made me happy. I put more care and pride there, and I found that by and large, it turned out to be people that really made me happy, and so I applied to be an RA. And this is our first peak, or maybe our second peak. There's a guy on top of the mountain. It's a peak. <laughs> <laughs> So I got really connected to something that, that was meaningful to me um, and other people, and I found shared values, and I met a lot of great friends, um, and it put me in a space that challenged me every day, and every day I still learned something new. And I've learned countless things, but I'm going to go through a few big ones. Um, these are going to be, be comfortable in the uncomfortable, life in a fishbowl, cross them off, failure, <laughs> failure as a learning moment, Less is more. People equals experience. I'll explain that later. And then privilege and baggage. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! You won! What do you, how does it feel? You won too? Wait, wait, no, stand back up. Introduce yourself. Um, hi, I'm Emily. What's, what's your, what did you want to be when you were a child? Um, I wanted to be a vet. And what's the best part of your day? Um, when I go to track practice. Okay, and what's your favorite meal of the day? Breakfast. All right, we're gonna get breakfast next week. Okay. Okay. It's on me. All right, and what's your name? Hi, I'm Syria. All right, and then if you could be anyone in history, who would you be? Uh, um, there's all these philosopher and poet, Khalil Gibran. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then, what is your least favorite um, breakfast food? Bacon. Bacon. OK, what's your favorite meal? <laughs> uh, like late night snack. All right, we're going to have a late night snack next week. <laughs> Way to pick a really Damn. obscure one. Did you, did you win? You can sit back down. <laughs> OK, please, please introduce yourself. I'm Kevin. All right. <laughs> Kevin, um, what was the, did I ask? Yeah, okay. What was a defining moment this week? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be a CA, so he needs to be able to answer questions like this. This week? Uh, this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's an easier one. When did you learn how to ride a bicycle? <laughs> So that's it. You can keep your bigger sheets or you could just you know, turn them over for now. Um, thank you for participating. And then come and find me after and remind me that we'll get food and we'll put it on my calendar so I don't forget. So these are the things that I'm going to go into very briefly with student life. This is a perfect time, too. I thought it was going to be something else. All right, cool. So be comfortable in the uncomfortable. This is a roller coaster. I hate roller coasters. I'm super afraid of them. They make me uncomfortable. Um, but occasionally I go on them because it, it helps me push a little bit past the fear I have. I know that so many other people get a lot of thrill out of it, and then I want to tap into that somewhere. And so I think the more I do it, maybe, maybe it'll like, maybe I'll feel some of that. Um, but there's a whole lot out there. Roller coasters for me are just just one of the things I'm uncomfortable with. But there's a whole lot of world out there, and most of us are just really content being in our own little corner, in our own little room, in our own little chair. It's a song. Um, but on our couch, you know, content with our city, with our hobbies, with our country, and we're not looking outside of that. Um, but there's so much to learn and grow from, and being in, by being comfortable in the uncomfortable, we put ourselves in the right environment to grow. And this was turned on to me, this quote, by the famous Helen Wang uh, in my sophomore RA sprint, uh, fall training. So I, I 
carried it very close to me ever since. Next, life in a fishbowl. There's this idea in student life where um, this phrase, life in a fishbowl, that you know, wherever you are, whether you're in the dorm, or they're out on campus, everyone's looking at you, somebody's looking at you. Um, and so you have to be really cognizant of what you say, what you do, and what you don't say, and what you do. So if you don't call somebody out when they're being sexist or racist or whatnot, um, because by not calling somebody out, you're, you're saying that, that kind of speech or whatever is okay, that actions are okay. Um, but there's something beyond just the how to act all the time. It seems a little bit scary, a little bit big brother, but uh, it's really empowering, I think, because by, by, being, by the things that you say and don't say, you can have an influence on other people. It's kind of like the butterfly effect that I, maybe I say one little thing to you, one little conversation, and maybe it, I, don't, I don't directly mean something, or maybe nothing happens immediately, maybe you don't even remember it, but possibly down the road, it'll influence you or impact you in a way that I've never intended, I will never realize, but might be really meaningful for you. So I just think that's really empowering because every, every action we do, everything we say, has an impact and we can change the world and be the change you want to see, maybe without being doing something super grandiose, but in the little ways. So, life is full. Failure as a learning moment. So when I get to turn the page. So, we screw up. Sometimes things don't go our way. Relationships end. I encourage you again to take something from everything. Um, what was good, what was bad, how to avoid screwing up again, how to improve so you have a better chance next time. <coughs> we need to forget the deficit model, which is something that I subscribe to a lot. And the deficit model, if you don't know, is thinking all on negatives. I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I'm bad at this, I'm not good at this. Um, and think more about your strengths and about the delta, what you can change. Um, so instead, look for, the, look for the strengths and things that you can improve on, and think about them not as failures, but growing edges. And what is a growing edge? Ooh, does the battery die? Oh, a growing edge. Areas about you that aren't quite refined and where there's still a lot of room for improvement is a growing edge. We all have them. No matter how refined you are, something's a growing edge. Um, and, and you might have heard the term rough around the edges or a diamond in the rough, maybe in Aladdin. <laughs> and uh, our, our street rat turns into a hero, but he didn't start out as a hero. So these are growing edges. And I don't have a slide for lessons more, but we're going to talk about lessons more. By a show of hands, who in this room is an overachiever? Okay, okay. Raise them up. It's okay. I didn't say you're a leper. If you were, that's okay too. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Overachievers. Room of overachievers. Many of us at Carnegie Mellon are overachievers. One of my failures um, is stretching myself too thin, being hyperextended, doing lots of things but not putting in really good work into everything I was doing, uh, putting in a lot of mediocre work, and then having all my commitments kind of compile onto each other um, in one week, leading to a lot of stress um, and asking a lot of me at one time. So I learned over the past three years to really pare down and to focus on what served me. I almost, at first when I started doing this, I almost felt like I couldn't quit some of the commitments that I had made, that I was obliged to them, and that, you know, wheels weren't going to spin if, unless I was there to help make them spin. But people will step in, people will step up, um, if you feel the need that, to do something else or to not continue. Um, and I think Andrew Carnegie said it best when he says, my heart is in the work. I don't interpret that to mean that you can only be focused <laughs> and, and love one thing. I think it means that whatever we do, make sure that you love it and then do it well. And don't do things that don't serve you. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> holding it upside down. Oh, drifting? Oh. <laughs> Maybe I'll just click. Oh, you got me? Cool. Yeah, we'll snap. Thanks. All right, so people as experience. So I, I mentioned before that like I really cared about people. I think I'm pretty good at people. I'm a decent listener. I can speak to small groups pretty well. I don't know about large groups. Um, and it was probably late in my sophomore year when I started to come up with this idea that 
people are like a, a frequency function, or maybe you can think of it as like all this information, all this experience crammed into like one human-shaped person that you're seeing right there in them. Um, and so like experience, knowledge, other people they know, it's constantly changing. Here is now. This is like 10 minutes ago, yesterday. Maybe you just came from dinner. Lindsay and I just had dinner. Maybe yesterday you got a call, you just got a job or an internship offer. Maybe a week ago, your grandfather passed away. Um, maybe tomorrow you're gonna have a new dog. Your mom's gonna get you a new dog. But regardless, you and I get lunch right now. Tomorrow you get breakfast with somebody, you have a really good conversation. Then you have dinner with somebody else. You're constantly changing. And, and so maybe the time, between the time I see you now and the time I see you again tomorrow, you're a totally different person. Well, probably not a totally different person, but maybe something significant or seemingly insignificant has changed, but that's gonna have an effect. Um, and here's where we get into privilege and baggage. <laughs> Through student life, I've become more aware of the fact that not everyone has the same privilege, privileges. I don't have to worry about somebody not being able to cut my hair, it's something that I don't think about. Or maybe being harassed because of my sexual orientation, or not, being, uh, not getting equal consideration because of my gender. These are things that I generally don't have to think about. But for other people, um, they have to endure maybe a lot of suffering or a lot more effort to, to do certain things. So we take a lot of our privileges for granted. Um, we're all able to be here in the US at this really high top tier institution, watching some silly philosophical presentation and enjoying a few refreshments. Like that's really unique. It doesn't happen to everybody. Um, so try to, try to take, not to take for granted some of your privileges, and just be cognizant of it. In the same vein, no, I'm sorry. In the same vein, we all have baggage. Um, you can't always see it, but I guarantee you there's plenty of people in this room who have been in a tough spot or know someone who's been in a tough spot um, and, and have, to have dealt with things that we would cringe at normally. Um, and it's easy to forget this too from day to day. Um, but again, just we could try to be cognizant of that, I think. You know, you live a better life than other people might too. So, this is a valley, not a peak. Um, and so, campus conversation, the campus conversation has been going on for some time about wellness. It's a buzzword, we've probably all heard it before, probably all know someone who struggled with a mental health issue, or maybe we have personally. Uh, and last spring, someone really dear to me was going through a period of serious depression in a situation climax, and I was there. Um, and I was shaken, and I really wanted to be there, and I wanted to support, and I wanted to help, and I wanted to make things better like I knew I had before. Um, and for a week after this event happened, I avoided almost everyone I knew. I minimized my social infra, my, my socializing. My world seemed unreal. I was super disconnected from everything. Um, I almost forgot to call my mom on her birthday, and she's probably the most important person in my life right now. And it took me a week, a total week, to realize how stressed I was. Um, and I thought I was coping perfectly fine. And I was in this canyon, and if it wasn't for a few good friends and mentors and some understanding professors, I probably wouldn't have finished last spring semester. Um, and so I lost my focus, I lost my motivation, I lost my, uh, some of my sense of awareness and self, um, and that needed some reconstruction. Um, it was then when I realized that I was no longer in a position to help because I had stopped taking care of myself. Uh, I've seen this a lot at CMU. Something comes in the way, people stop taking care of themselves, or people who do great things for others or the campus, um, do great work, get burnt out and depleted. And so I just ask that everyone remembers to put themselves in the equation. Because um, it's, it's tough when you get to the point where you start to break down yourself. So, <coughs> Vistas and pauses. If life or my CMU journey is like a hike, then we're all going to have vistas. Um, sometimes they're going to be at the bo bottom of your valley, and you're going to lose the path and have to refine that. Um, sometimes they're going to be at the top, and you're going to say, wow, check out that view, it's gorgeous. Sometimes it's going to be somewhere in the middle, and you're going to say, oh, is that, that's a really cool animal. Is that a Sasquatch? <laughs> and uh, I think whenever you have these kinds of moments, you just like stop, contemplate it, take it in, think about what does it feel like, what does it smell like, what does it mean to you? And in my Carnegie Mellon experience, there are three vistas or pauses that I remember really vividly. And the first is uh, with Kevin Hunter, who I've ridiculed several times later today. And it was the stop and appreciate how far you made it moment. Uh, we were just walking to dinner in the Morwood parking lot, and he just stops. He's like, you ever just stop and think and say, hey, I made it here right now. Like, 
think of all the things that had to go wrong and all the things that had to go right for me to get right here and like think about all I've done so far. Like that's pretty cool. So thanks, Kevin. Like, that stuck with me, um, and I like to stop and appreciate it every once in a while. I don't think we do that enough at CMU. I don't think we celebrate our successes. I think we move on to the next one. We accomplish something. We go on to the next thing. Um, so stop and appreciate how far you made it. The next one was, why do I do it? No, I'm sorry. Why do I do it? And this happened, these are not in chronological order. Why do I do it? I was sophomore spring, overloaded, RA, taking all these classes, working until 4 a.m. on weekends, wondering why I did it. Why am I doing all this work? What does it mean? How did, how did I get in this position? And I boiled it all down and I realized again it was people. People are the reason that I'm doing things for my brothers, for my friends, family. If there wasn't a person on this earth, then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. It wouldn't, nothing would mean anything. So I think it's really important that we all think about why we're doing what we're doing. That way we can you know, justify our actions a little bit more. And then thirdly, what are my goals? This happened last junior year, fall semester. I, was, I realized that I had wanted a bunch of things, but I wasn't going to pursue them. And one of those things was traveling. So I, I just looked out gates out one of the windows on the fourth floor, and I thought for a while, you know, why am I doing those things that I want to do, and then how can I start doing them? So I made a list of all the places that I want to go to. Um, and then in that year, I went to Doha, Qatar, I went to Germany, and I went to a few other places. Um, planning to go to my really, really close friends to India for a month. We just got, I just got my visa. So after graduation, I'll be going there. All right, thanks. Oh, cool. <laughs> this, uh, this is in Copenhagen. This is my study abroad slide. It's a peak. Um, study abroad, definitely. <laughs> Definitely a peak, study abroad. I recommend to all you freshmen, sophomores, juniors, if you haven't, think about it, whether it's research or um, classes or spring, summer, fall. Study abroad was fantastic. I went to Germany for <coughs> two months, met a great a bunch of people, some from the US, Canada, Italy, Spain, Germany, obviously. My roommates were fantastic. Greece, um, I learned a whole lot. I had fantastic conversations with strangers in every country I went to. Learned a lot about um, how people just generally take time out of their day to help you. Um, but I didn't go just to have a blast. I went to be alone and to uh, be really self-aware and to just take care of myself. But of course, the first night I was there, I was cleaning vomit from a fellow American's hair who <laughs> went out a little too much that night. Um, and I learned that, you know, I'm someone who takes care of people, and that's just part of who I am, and that's okay. And when I was taking trains, I had a lot of time to sit and be pensive and think um, and, and reflect. And I did, and I came back refreshed with new goals, new purposes, and a redefined sense of self. And I took in a lot of culture when I was there. I was comfortable in the uncomfortable in an unfamiliar place. And I was in different environments that, when you're in a different environment, you can compare it to what you're familiar with. So I realized that, for example, trains in Europe don't have buttons, or they have buttons that you need to press to get out, and so I missed several stops when I was there. And I got to really, really think broadly about my worldview. Um, and there's also something really unique about experiencing the silence of not being able to understand the conversations around you, uh, which I think is really beautiful. Also, on the topic of studying abroad, last spring break, I went to Doha, Qatar, which some students are from there right now, or some other people that have gone there. Really fantastic people. It's like a carbon copy of CMU here. Um, but in a totally different environment. Same type of people, same values, also from all over the world, but in a different manner, more from uh, the Middle East, North Africa, Southeast Asia. And I've had some incredible conversations with the people over there, and I've kept in touch the past three years with some of the people, um, people that I met during Odyssey. I was actually just at Buggy this past weekend, um, watching some of the buggies go down over on the on Flagstaff. And like right to my right, it was this girl, Narciss, who came over to pick up an award from Tepper because she's like the best Tepper student ever. Um, and we just had a fantastic conversation. And I only saw her for an hour, and I haven't seen her in like a whole year. Super cool. So I would definitely say, um, if you've got the time, look into the campus over there. Try to connect with some of the people that are coming here. Um, think about studying there or doing a spring break. Um, but bottom line of all of this is go abroad, challenge your worldview, and learn outside of familiar context. So this is also a valley. It has water in it to reflect the fact that earlier <laughs> earlier this year, 
I lost some of my anchors that I had previously in my Carnegie Mellon experience. Um, and so I was kind of adrift. And I found myself being overly critical of myself. I started to feel in limbo. I was looking for jobs and I was starting to disconnect from the university. I couldn't engage in it like I had as a sophomore or a junior um, in new opportunities. I really couldn't like feel the, the tartan of, the, of Carnegie Mellon. And so sometimes we forget our values and beliefs. Sometimes we lose our sense of wonder, act out of character. Sometimes we go against the flow. Sometimes we beat against the current. It's good to check in every once in a while and ask yourself if you're happy doing what you're doing, being the person you are, if your grandparents would be proud of the values that you're living up to. And if not, it's not the end of the world. There's no one worth making happier than yourself, though. And, and that happens on a really deep level. So to thine own self be true, it's kind of like the who am I question, something that maybe you should keep in the back of your head. I like to keep in the back of my head and just say, you know, am, am I being the person that I really am proud to be? So I learned through this uh, valley that one of my anchors was um, adventure and yearn, a yearning for adventure. And so I made a bucket list, which most seniors make a bucket list. You gotta cross off all the things before you leave Pittsburgh. But I think it's not exclusive for seniors to be making a bucket list. I think we all need one because otherwise we find ex too many excuses not to do things. And I, I think we should get rid of YOLO and start LIBY, <laughs> which is living, live. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God nobody got a bingo here. <laughs> so, set a time for. We're going to do a lot of cooking right now. Ready? Friends? <laughs> All right, and Pittsburgh. Go explore Pittsburgh. Lots of culture, lots of history, um, lots of new things coming about every day. Um, it's a fantastic city. We're super lucky to be here. Um, oh, sorry, actually. <laughs> Same vein, um, go eat off campus, self-explanatory. Um, and go to campus events and lectures. Thank you for coming here. They're free right now. I'm very much aware that next year I'm not going to have as much opportunity to go to free things. So do it while you can. And some final thoughts. We're in the home stretch now. This is a quote that I learned from Falashide Okanubi. If you know her, Bo, she's great. You've probably met her in some way or another. And it goes, if you reflect on who you were six months ago, you don't feel even slightly embarrassed by that person. You aren't growing, you're stagnant. And actually how I remember this, because this was several months ago, was if you're the same person you were three months ago, you're not doing it right. Not quite the same, but thanks to Poe. She got it from a blog. And I just want to say <laughs> <laughs> that maybe she wrote? <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I just want to say that I'm constantly growing, I'm constantly trying new things, pushing boundaries I've created for myself, learning to be more vulnerable, caring less about the little things, laughing at myself more, dreaming more, and of course I'm, I'm really nervous about this and what will happen next, um, but I've decided that I can't really worry, really worry about what I don't have any control over. Um, so my last advice, don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> I came in with a Snuggie today. Uh, it makes things a lot easier when you're ridiculous. Find healthy ways to blow off steam. Oh, Lindsay does it too. <laughs> um, she didn't know I put that in there. <laughs> Find ways to blow off steam in a healthy manner. Thank God Carnival only comes once a year. Um, do things besides work that can enrich your experience and stimulate you. Um, and before I turn it over, I want to leave you with a poem that I wrote about a month ago because I probably won't have a better audience or a better time to say this. Um, and it's more of a moving on poem, but it's one that's also about living in the now, so hopefully everyone can take a little bit of something from here. Betwixt the time we meet again, from here and now to then and there, remember always to hold your brow up to the world, not out and down. With shoulders broad and eyes alight, both curious and unafraid, go make your work, go dream a dream, bear love and pain and in between. Do you and yours and others too, but keep things simple, keep things few. And while looking forward, please off glance back, Respect where once you came and been, and chance upon rose bushes frequent. Please revel in just simply being. So, that thank you very much for listening. I hope I didn't bore you too much. <laughs>